Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. Welcome everybody, welcome everybody tuning in. First time, last time listeners, welcome everybody tuning in or not tuning in, you know how we do. I'm trying to figure out what's going on in my chat right now, my chat seems to be uh, not necessarily open right now, I gotta figure out what's going on with it. But anyway, shout out to everybody tuning in on Twitch, shout out to everybody tuning in on the YouTube we're going to get right into this thing. Um, more than likely, I'm going to be honest with y'all, I'll probably cut the intro. Just for one of y'all. <laughs> just, just for one of y'all. It, great intro, but we might not be able to use it for YouTube. Um, but uh, this is Iceberg Slim 2, as y'all already know. Um, this is going to be more so focused on the arrangement side of Beyonce and Jay-Z. So, there's been rumors that there's been more of a love arrangement than anything as far as their uh, establishment goes in their marriage. So, I thought it would be okay for us to at least take a little bit of a deep dive into that world. So, it it, it dawned upon me that Beyonce was kind of... I'm not going to say oblivious to her fame, but more so not knowledgeable to the fact that she is very famous, if you will. And I say that with respect. Once again, this is going to be more so on the positive side, Beehive. I'm just telling you all right now, this is more on the positive side for her. Um, but yeah, she's been more so just not knowing to how famous she actually is and to more so just wanting to live a regular life, as most celebrities do, of course, just want to live their life, you know? But... For someone that would just want to, you know, like I said, live their life, you would think there would be a little bit more. You know, I don't want to come people. back. Put my thing. name on your t shirt. Love, love, put me on your it's a tough time. And it's tough for the music industry. And, you know, I'm an artist that tours, I'm an artist that makes albums. That's it. People don't make albums anymore. They don't make albums. They just try to sell a bunch of little quick singles and they burn out and they put out a new one and they burn out and they put out a new one. People don't even listen to a body of work anymore. We are number one. The album debuted at number one! When I first started out, there was no internet people taking pictures of you and putting your personal life or exploiting your personal life as entertainment. I think people are so brainwashed. You get up in the morning, you click on the computer, you see all these pictures and it's uh, all you think of is the picture and the image that you see all day, every day. And you don't see the human form. And I, I think when Nina Simone put out music, you loved her voice. That's what she wanted you to love. That's what, that was her instrument but you didn't get brainwashed by her day-to-day -day life and what her child is wearing and who she's dating and, you know, all the things that really, it's not your business, you know? And it shouldn't influence the way you listen to the voice and the art, but it does. Which I totally agree. I've always totally agreed with that in that regard. You know, the music industry has always been uh, very harsh in that regard. So when you, when you have the fans that you have to cater to the fans, but you also have to cater to yourself at the end of the day. And with Beyonce, her career has been, so to speak, pre-planned. It never was a thing of, oh, I just want to be a star by myself. You, you know, remember, she was put into a group early on. Similar to Michael Jackson, how Michael Jackson started with the Jackson 5, Beyonce started with Destiny's Childs. So, her father had her cemented into the music industry very, very young. She started out, what, 15, 16 years old in Destiny's Childs? So, she's been doing this for quite some time, about 30 years now. 
about 30 years she's been well, almost yeah pretty much majority of her life she spent in the music industry than she has actually living life so in a sense yes she's been more oblivious to the fact that she is actually famous and doesn't know how famous she actually is so with her being such a very young star in the music industry you have to also think that with her being with someone like Jay-Z, who, let's look at the timeline of things, right? Jay-Z met her in 1999. Beyonce was 17, barely turning 18 at the time. In which they have went on record to have been, you know, made it so, sort of a confusion to when they've actually, you know, started dating. Because one would say they started dating at 18, or excuse me, they started, they met each other at 18. Another one said they met each other at 19. Beyonce would say that they first met, previously she told 17 that they met when she was 18. Which would be around September 1999. And between uh, September 1999 and August 2000. And they would begin dating around the time of 19 years old. No? No, I'm saying if I sing a little melody up under you saying that that's how you like it, huh? It would make it fuller. If this would be on the Dangerously in Love album. When I first heard That's How You Like It, I loved it. And, um... Basically, the song talks about all the things in a relationship you like, all of the characteristics in a man that you like, and it, it just, it's really happy. It's, you know, just a feel-good song. Let me get the, um, the second and third one over. So, one thing to also note that is very clear, right? It's the fact that they are how many years apart? Jay-Z is well in his 30s at this time. Beyonce is barely even 20 years old. Let's think about that. This is pretty much a practice of Jay-Z's at this point. If we are following along from Icebreak Slim 1, when he dated a young Foxy Brown, when he dated a young Carmen, when he dated a young Emil, which he never really dated Emil, but we always we all know that Emil was pretty much used as a cloak. He takes the young naive girl, makes something of it, but the return on the investment for Beyonce was just too big of a payout for him to turn down. So let's not forget, he dated Aaliyah and Beyonce at the same time in the year 2000. As we just went across the timeline again, between 1999 and 2000 is when they first started dating. He was still with Aaliyah until up to the time she passed while she was dating with Dame Dash. Emil was merely just a curtain for when Aaliyah passed away, Emil's first video actually included Beyonce, as we show it again in the first doc. So when Aaliyah dies, Emil gets vanished, then in comes Beyonce as the number one girl. As we also went over, Jaguar Wright had heard Memphis Bleak saying, Fuck Aaliyah, she's dead. Beyonce is the queen now. Remember when Memphis Bleak said that to Dame? Backstage at the Fade to Black concert. So Beyonce would then throughout the years pretty much endure a lot of cheating allegations from Jay-Z publicly and quiet. But that was because we all know pretty much her career was pre-planned and she had nothing to do with it. But she wanted to always keep this arrangement, so to speak, 
a secret. Now, it's been rumored that you're dating um, Jay-Z, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't actually talk about who I'm dating, who I'm not, because I think it's important that I concentrate on the music. And when you start talking about those things, then that becomes bigger than the art. You know what? That was going to be my advice to you. I mean, I was sitting up with the producer and I said, I'm going to tell her to keep her mouth shut <laughs> about her relationship because it should be private. Thank you and very I, much. And I wish, I wish if I had it to do all over again, I would have never mentioned what's his name's name. I know. <laughs> I really never would have. I think it's the smartest thing in the world to do. Thank you. Thank you. Really. Right. It's nobody's business but yours and his. Oh, I love you. Yours is true. <laughs> Hi, YouTubers. Say, I'm excited. Remember, her entire career was already pre-planned. So if we're thinking around the regards of being pre-planned, right? That would mean it's a task schedule basically to how her career is supposed to go. You have to give her, so to speak, the Marilyn Monroe treatment as far as her being a superstar but you also have to give her the family wholesome vibe as far as her image goes. So she has to keep the private girl image, but she's still dating at the same time she has to be married. So notice how the confirmed relationship doesn't come about until a couple of years before she's actually going to be married to, to Jay-Z. Let's just listen to her father, for example on just how much her career was pre-planned. What do you think during the time before Destiny's Child had a huge single, what do you think was the hardest thing that you went through? Was there ever a time where you said, you know, I may need to go back to work and kind of put this music thing aside? Well, I didn't say that. Uh, certainly my wife at the time uh, made those comments that I should go back to work. Uh, I was focused on, on making this successful. I, I always had the vision and belief that it would be successful. Um, there was a lot of failure in the beginning and there was a learning curve for myself. There was a learning curve for, for the, the ladies. Uh, and I went back to college. I, I went back and took classes to understand artist management, to understand production. Uh, the ladies were taking vocal lessons, choreography, uh, media training, all of us. You know, we, we've had failure and we, again, one of those traits in the DNA of Achiever is learning from failure, learning from mistakes. What do you think were some of the, the biggest failures that you had during that time? Uh, well, I think getting dropped, the ladies got dropped from Electra Records. Uh, I didn't understand it at the time. Daryl Simmons, who I have a lot of admiration, signed the ladies to a production deal. I didn't understand the different types of deals, production deals, label deals, uh, and understanding the difference of a production deal and a, uh, signing directly with the label. Uh, you know, that was a, a learning experience that Daryl was a partner with Babyface and L.A. Reid. They were writing partners. And then these guys were writing at that time. They were writing for Whitney Houston. They were writing for everybody, Tony Braxton, TLC, Boys to Men. We're talking number one artists. Daryl was extremely, extremely occupied and busy as a songwriter. I didn't understand that as a manager. And probably looking back on that, pressed way too hard on the relationship that he focused on Destiny's Child. Now myself being a record label executive, I understand when you're just ter terribly busy that sometimes the other artists have to wait. Now a lot of people when they think of fathers managing the musical careers of their kids, they think of Joe Jackson. Where do you think you and Joe Jackson differ on your approach and how you guys managed? You know, I don't know Mr. Jackson. I uh, only know what I've uh, seen actually on TV shows and you know, what I've heard from the media. And I've learned uh, and I've experienced most of what you hear from the media is not true. So I can't give a judgment on Mr. Jackson. I can just base it on the one movie that uh, I've looked at two or three times. 
Um, and if that had any truth to it, and again, I have to emphasize, I, you know, I can't put a lot of credence in the media uh, presenting it accurate. Uh, he came from a different background, uh, both educationally, uh, he came from a, big, a different background uh, with his experience and knowledge of corporate America, uh, his knowledge of marketing and sales, uh, and it appears that our backgrounds have no difference. We, there's no similarities in our backgrounds whatsoever, and it, it appears our approach has no similarities whatsoever. Fair enough. Both of you have kids that became superstars, though. Absolutely. That, that we do share. When you looked at the level of success that Destiny's Child and Beyonce got, was it somewhat of a surprise that they got as big as they are, or was this all planned out ahead of time? Oh, no, it, it was, it was uh, planned out ahead of time. Uh, you, gotta, you have to know my background. You know, I was fortunate, uh, we were talking earlier, I was fortunate in a medical division to be the number one sales rep worldwide at Xerox Medical Systems. Uh, three out of four years. Uh, I was fortunate to co-own uh, a, a clothing line that was highly successful that we sold for a significant amount of money, House of Darion and, and Darion clothing line. Uh, you have to understand years back in the 80s, I uh, co-founded and co-owned one of the most successful hair salons in Houston for 18 years, uh, Headliners. And so my background very uh, that fortunate, grateful. Um, this is one of our successes, the, the, uh, the music industry. But personally, I've had success way before the music industry. You have had a lot of success. But a Beyonce level success is really a monstrous level, though. You see what I'm saying? You're talking about a handful of human beings in the history of Earth have really gotten to that level. I, I certainly understand that. I, I won't debate that her success is paramount and paramount. I'm simply saying that when you're in a corporate world and you're the very best worldwide at something, it's no different. Understand what I'm saying, Vlad. I'm saying that I've been fortunate to be with parts and entities that were the best worldwide. No different than Beyonce and Destiny's Child were the best worldwide. The approach for being the best at something is the same approach, regardless if it's the medical division of Xerox or being a number one artist. That approach is similar. If you have an experience being the best at something, then it would be a big deal. I've experienced way before Destiny's Child being the best at something. That's what I'm saying. That's interesting. I mean, because most people don't, don't equate the two. They think that success in business is not the same thing. As and they've never been. So that's the thing. In the music industry, success in business, of course, is the same thing. But you would think in hindsight that they weren't. So, like I said, Beyonce's career has always been pre-planned from the get-go. It was never a thing of her own decisions. For the first 15, 16 years of her career, everything was decided for her. From her father to Columbia Records to Sony Music, pretty much deciding her every single move. So, Beyonce never really knew how to move on her own like that. Uh, Jay-Z, once he got into the picture, you can already see, of course, someone, like I said, is, what, 12 years her senior, is pretty much very experienced and well-rounded around the block. So, you would think Jay-Z is just mainly there to coach her and show her how to move on her own, right? That, my friends, what some would say would be grooming, Right? So, let's also think about the fact that, you know, her career is pre-programmed, right? I want you to now listen to the fact that her father only dated light-skinned women because that was the quote-unquote way of the entertainment industry. 
of dating light skin or blonde women. And then you eventually married Tina, who was extremely light skinned. Exactly. So, you know, I began dating either all white or extremely light complexion black women. That was my MO. Um, you know, that was my MO. Okay. And Tina's Creole, I guess? Yes. yes. Okay. She's Creole, but when her family literally, uh, her great grandparents are white Frenchmen that live right outside of Paris. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. And then her. Because Beyonce is her maiden name. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. So you end up, based on the history and everything you've been taught and so forth, and everything you've been exposed to, you go and consciously or unconsciously marry someone much lighter, much lighter than yourself. Exactly. Okay. Th that's exactly right. Okay. Did you start thinking about it at that point or not really? Not really. I mean, when I saw Tina, I, I met her at a party. Uh, and, you know, you see somebody at a party and you think they're white. But I consciously thought she was white. I have to say, once I met her, it was very clear that she was uh, a, a very conscious black woman. Uh, and and uh, really, uh, her blackness was inside and out, and as well as her beauty. Okay. Then you go and have kids with her. Mm hmm You go and have uh, Beyonce and Solange. Yes. And then Kelly comes in the picture. She's like a kid to us because she lived with us um, gosh, 10 years old, 11 years old, um, up until her adulthood. Okay. What was the story? How did she come into the family? Well, uh, there was this group called Girls' Time that uh, went on to go to Star Search, and they lost. And then I got involved after that. Before that, I, I wasn't involved. Uh, and once we got involved, uh, her mother was a nanny, and they lived in a white home. They actually lived in a white home, two doctors. And one day, her mother came home, and uh, they sat her down and told her they were getting a divorce and that literally they had to move out in two weeks. And her mother wasn't prepared for that and asked if we would keep Kelly because Kelly was really committed to this, this girl group. And her mother needed to go back to Atlanta to just get herself together. And so we committed to keep Kelly for a month that turned into like eight years or mm -hmm. 10 years or something. Okay. Yeah. So you go and form Destiny's Child. Mm-hmm. Originally, there were there were different members. Yes. So, uh, originally it was it was Beyonce, uh, Latavia, and Latoya. Latavia. Latavia. And, sorry. And Latoya. Yeah. Yeah. And Kelly. And Kelly. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. The group forms. Why did Latavia and Latoya end up leaving the group? Uh, that's a story I'm not going to tell now. You have to write me a check for that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good try, though. Okay. Well, we interviewed Farah at one point. Who? <laughs> who? Farrah. Who? Who is that? <laughs> no idea who that is. Okay. Huh? Yeah. Well, she, she talked about it. This was on, I guess, TRL. And Beyonce was speaking, you know, about, about the situation. So she says, we have to say that Farah was not kicked out of Destiny's Child. She actually did not show up for three major promotional events. One which was MTV All Access, she walked out on that, and the Cube Summer Jam, another one in Seattle. You'll see all that on the All Access show. We also had a five day promotional tour in Australia, which was our first visit there, very important, she didn't come. We all- Notice something as well. Other than Kelly Rowland, notice how there was never really a dark skinned female in Destiny's Childs. Kelly Rowland was basically an anomaly. But it was only because she was quote unquote family. That was literally the only reason Kelly Rowland would have been in the group. Otherwise, Matthew would have not put her in the group based upon his principles of the light skin. If we notice what happened to the other group members beside Beyonce that were much lighter. I agree that Farah and Destiny's Child should part ways. We wish her the best in the future. But it wasn't a management decision, it was a group decision. We all feel that no personal problems that can be resolved are worth disappointing your fans. Yeah, well, that's not true. 
I've never missed a show ever or I would have got kicked out the group <laughs> you know how much I was getting paid to do a show and that's the best part of my day I'm not missing any shows but when I leave the group they weren't honest with people and said that I left they were trying to give themselves more time to clear the air or whatever but I've never missed a show ever and like I said if I would have missed the group then they would have kicked me out again we we'll we'll talk about that in in uh in the next book, okay. uh, and, and I don't want to give that away today. Okay, fair enough. So you go and put this group together. You talked about there's a certain level of racism in the radio industry. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You must have read the book. Thank you, because it's been very, very frustrating in interviews that I was misquoted, that uh, so I, I, I can tell when someone's read the book because their interview is different. Mm -hmm. So I thank you for that. You're welcome. So talk about the, the racism. From, uh, from a music perspective? Yeah. Well, I talked about it from several. Um, one was discrimination, more, and then I'll talk about the, the racism part. Discrimination was when I got in the music industry in the 90s and I came from corporate America, uh, where we fought discrimination, uh, to go into an industry where you had a black department or urban department a black music department or urban department uh, was foreign because I fought so hard at Xerox and to not have that. Uh, and so um, I realized in order to be successful, uh, you have to sell to everyone. Uh, you can't segment a marketplace. You can, but if you're going to sell to 40 million people or if you're going to want to sell to 340 million people, that's a decision one should make. Uh, but that was part of it. And because when I got to to Sony as a manager and executive, I was asked to manage a all-girl group that was white, uh, an all-boy group that was white. So I know this for a fact, that their budgets were different, uh, their recording budgets were different, their marketing budgets were different, their advances were different than those in the urban division. Uh, and so that was a description discriminatory part of the industry that I witness. Uh, the racist part of the business that I look that still exists today. In some context, I've taught at Texas Southern for eight years, Texas Southern University in Houston. And I teach uh, entertainment recording management is a degree that you get. So one of my artist management class, uh, I challenged him to do some research about three years ago. And the research was to go back 15 years and, and from a colorism perspective, show me at pop radio the number of black women that were of high complexion and the number of black women that were of dark complexion that got airplay. And again, this is from a research perspective. I've since learned that the common uh, public don't understand the difference of research versus emotional. So the comments I made on the book about race, ra racism is really based on factual data. And when you look back at the charts at Top 40 Radio, you'll see that the, the black women that have been uh, successful with airplay were all of light complexion. Right, because you had mentioned Mariah Carey, Rihanna, mm -hmm. Nikki. Nicki Minaj, and your kids. And Alicia Keys. Alicia Keys and Beyonce. It's launched. But it says others in the book, but right. Um, are all light skinned and they all get pushed. Correct. And you being in the music industry, you yeah. know that's valid. Well, let me think. Lauren Hill's fairly dark skinned. Yeah, there's exceptions, yeah. Yeah, Lauren Hill. Yeah, there's always She hasn't been exceptions. around in a while. Yeah. What are the other exceptions? Again, we said fifteen years, so Yeah. She, she was out. She was excluded. Yeah, exactly. I'm trying to think who who are the other yeah, think you can't. You can't really think of it. You think of it? No. Yeah, I, and, I, and and those of us that understand the industry and you, you know you, we you understand exactly what I'm saying. I mean, Whitney Houston was fairly light skinned, but this is again, yeah. Whitney falls again in the light in the light skin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I right. tell you why because Clive, that was one of his things. He airbrushed and made her photos. You know, lighting can do a lot, also. Right. Uh, Mary J. Blige was fairly no, brown skin. No, no, yeah, Mary is down. She did one album, remember, the one with the butterflies, the video, I can't remember. Uh, and it didn't do that well. It didn't get airplay at Top 40. This I know for a fact. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm really looking through the list here. I mean, Aaliyah, of course, very light skinned. Yeah. Um, yeah, I never really thought about it before, but. Well, and again, that's you know part of why I wrote the book "Racism from the Eyes of a Child" is to get people thinking and dialogue and conversation. Does this apply to men as well? Because you see dark skinned men. Our, our research and focus were on women. Okay, so you just didn't. Uh, yeah, I, for I, example, Kendrick is at the top of the yeah, charts we, these days. We, we didn't do we didn't do men. Okay, uh, men are, are some word some uh, what exemplified also. Uh, when we look at the hip hop rap in industry, uh, it becomes. But when you look at the rap industry, who gets more airplay than anybody is who? White people? No, Drake. Drake. At top 40. Ah, right, yeah. At top 40. Which he's very right about that, right? So let's think about that, right? The father only dated light skinned women because he knew that they were the most appealing in the entertainment industry. Even Tina him, herself, you know, he thought it was white skeptical about it but that would show if we're thinking about the psyche of things that would show just how much beyonce herself pays attention to those beauty principles that are pretty much programmed into her right if we're just being honest about things as we see here if we're looking at the comparison between you know, yesteryear and this year, her hair was almost, was pretty much always darker, was it not? It was always the darker brawn. It wasn't until recent years, in the revampment of the Cowboy Carter, that she chose to go with the platinum blonde. But one has to also think of the fact that she's still trying to look young. Remember, Beyonce is how old now? Forty two years old. Does she really need to go platinum blonde to appeal young? Or is the platinum blonde more so to appeal to a different crowd? But we're going to get back to that because we have to also follow the timeline of things. So as we all know, Jay-Z would also be, you know, be rumored to be cheating with a plethora of women while he was also with Beyonce. We've already went over the timeline of between 2001 and 2002. And pretty much 2003, we had not, not just Aaliyah, we also had Jaguar Wright. We also had Blue Cantrell. We would have Rihanna over the years. We would have Rita Ora over the years. Even Tierra Marie. But one would not boil her more than a Karina White. Which Around the timeline, 2010-2011, Beyonce and Jay-Z are rumored to be having a baby. But around that same exact time, I'm going to now give you guys a blog here from Rhymes with Snitch. This was written in 2011. To the, uh, Tuesday, September 6, 2011, publicist dies mysterious death. Hmm. Interesting. On September 2, 2011, 28-year-old publicist Kathy Karina White, known as Corey to her friends, was found dead in her apartment in New York City. Kathy was a graduate for 
Howard University, owned a PR firm and was considered a <clears throat> excuse me and was considered a health and beauty expert. She was also rumored to have been the longtime mistress of Jay Z. If you recall murmurs of Jay Z and Karina's alleged affair, first resurfaced in September two thousand and ten. The murmurs turned to stage whispers after Jay was named an explosive blind item about a cheating rapper who was about to be outed by his long-term mistress. Some find it chilling that almost a year to the day after the scandal first broke that the woman in question turns up dead, adding to more intrigue to the table blogger Mona Shakespeare, who talks mad shit about me on my own site. Oh, I don't know why they're even talking about that. Oh, okay. So, this is Karina White right here. Now, we, we covered part of Karina White on the last one. But if you guys aren't familiar with Karina White, I'm going to bring you up to speed a little bit on something. A towel in Las Vegas with Claudia Jordan and Diddy. You want to know what makes Diddy being publicly shamed like this so so left? What's that? Sean Carter is worse. For years, you would struggle to find anything on the internet about Jay-Z's alleged mistress, Kathy White, who died under mysterious circumstances in 2011. However, journalist Liz Crokin just dropped a major bombshell on social media, claiming that she talked to Kathy before she died. Liz is now threatening Jay-Z that his time is coming. Meanwhile, old blog posts resurfaced, where eyewitnesses claimed they saw Kathy with Jay-Z and Diddy. So with all these allegations coming out about Diddy, fans are saying Jay-Z might really be next. But what's the story about Kathy White? How did she die? and what does Liz Cronkin know about Jay-Z? Let's break it down. She contacted her, allegedly, and we will get into that. When the announcement was made by this publication that was going to out this situation... In early September 2011, a handful of local news outlets and celeb blogs reported on the death of a young woman named Kathy Coriana White, some of them referring to her as Jay-Z's alleged mistress. However, the mainstream media was too busy raving about Beyonce's surprise pregnancy announcement, and news about Kathy's death didn't reach a lot of people. Even the outlets that originally reported on it later scrubbed all mention of Kathy from their websites. But if you do some digging, you can still find some of the original articles, like this one published on Hot 107, titled Jay-Z. Z's alleged mistress dies at 28. The article states, fitness and beauty expert Kathy Coriana White was found dead in her Manhattan apartment on September 2nd. White, a Howard University graduate and a contributor to various online publications, was the CEO of her own public relations firm, White Label PR. The reported cause of death was an aneurysm. According to this article, Kathy battled the blogs the previous year after Hollywood Street King, one of the OG celeb gossip bloggers, reported that she was Jay-Z's mistress. The article further states that the rumors about Kathy and Jay-Z were sparked after she and model Claudia Jordan were allegedly spotted at Las Vegas Tao nightclub sitting at a table with Jay-Z and Puffy, aka Diddy. Now, if you go search for Kathy White on Hollywood Street King's website, you can still find three separate blog posts from 2010 about Jay-Z's alleged affair with Kathy. The first two posts were published on August 31st, 2010, one titled Busted, Jay-Z Caught Cheating on Beyonce with Kathy White, and the other, Jay-Z Photographed with Mr. Kathy White at Tao. The first blog post contains a photo of Kathy posing with two girlfriends, and it alleges that Jay-Z was involved with Kathy for longer than he's been married to Beyonce. For context, Jay-Z and Beyonce tied the knot in April 2008. The article then states that Kathy is a close friend of known homewrecker, Claudia Jordan, in reference to reports that Claudia had an affair with actor Michael Jai while he was married to his wife of five years, Courtney Chapman. So according to this post by Hollywood Street King, they first got a tip about Jay-Z and Kathy's alleged affair from sources close to Kathy's good friend, Jason Lee. Now, this is interesting that Jason Lee is mentioned here because if you remember last year, ahead of Beyonce's Renaissance movie premiere, Jason claimed he had major tea to spill on Beyonce and tried to blackmail her, saying he would spill the whole thing unless Beyonce gets Kelly Rowland to do an interview with him. Can you imagine had I put that on Hollywood Live? Oh, there's one more thing. Beat this, Johnny. Woo! 
so that in itself, I think Beyonce could have gave me a, you know what I mean? Like there should be a little love there. Now. Maybe she doesn't know. She know Beyonce doesn't know. Yeah, I don't think Beyonce, Yvette and they're not going to share that Yvette with her. knows. Her I got the receipts. Know. I still her have the receipts. Know. So now that Jason's name popped up in reference to Kathy White, fans are speculating that maybe Jason knows something about Kathy's death. Now, going back to Hollywood Street King's post from August 2010, it states that last September, Corey, which was Kathy's nickname, and Claudia were spotted at Las Vegas Town nightclub sitting at a table with Jay-Z and Puffy, and Beyonce was nowhere to be seen. We're told the entourage was there to see the boxing match between Floyd Mayweather and Juan Manuel Marquez. And then later that same day, Hollywood Street King published another post about Jay-Z and Kathy. Kathy, claiming that once the story about Jay-Z's mistress broke, the alleged mistress, Kathy Coriana White, immediately deleted her Twitter and Facebook account. The post also apparently included a photo of drunken Claudia Jordan being taken away on a stretcher to the hospital as a result of a fall in the shower of her hotel room in Las Vegas. Now, this photo has been removed from the original post. However, we do know that Claudia was in Vegas multiple times throughout 2009. She was there for the Miss USA pageant in April 2009, and then this article published in May 2009 by Las Vegas Sun mentions Claudia, Jay-Z, and Diddy partying in Vegas with a bunch of other celebs. The article states, Jay-Z and Kansas City Chief Larry Johnson partied at a VIP table next to the DJ booth. Unfortunately, the former Def Jam CEO and 4040 Club co-founder's better half, Beyonce Knowles, did not join them. D so let's, 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 let's be honest here. They've been dating for about two years now, if we're following. If we're talking about 2000, what, what they just say, 2009? And then Kathy, what, pops up dead in 2011? They had been dating for about two years in. Deal or no deal beauty, Claudia Jordan, on the other hand, did stop by their table to say hello. Now fast forward to September 2010 and Hollywood Street King published another post about Kathy White titled, Jay's Mistress Kathy White Exposed. The post claimed that just before Jay-Z and Kathy attended the Sin City fight, Jay purchased a $2,500 pair of Louis Vuitton shoes for Corey to wear that evening. And allegedly, Jay requested Corey bring a few friends to ride with them that evening in order for them not to appear as a couple. According to Hollywood Street King, Jay also took Corey gambling at the Bellagio Casino, and he was reportedly adamant about Corey's friends circling the pair during their time at the table in an attempt to cover their public appearances. Now, if you're wondering where Beyonce was in September 2009, well, conveniently, she was overseas on her I Am World Tour. The Floyd Mayweather fight that Jay-Z allegedly attended with Kathy in Vegas took place on September 19th, 2009, and on that day, Beyonce had a concert in Sydney, Australia. Anyway, after Hollywood Street King first reported on Jay Jay-Z's alleged affair with Kathy, no one really paid much attention to it until news broke that Claudia died in September 2011. However, So, while she's overseas on tour, Jay-Z's supposedly cheating on her. But the buck didn't stop there with the details on Miss Karina White. So, like I said, ironically now, she passes away supposedly while she is pregnant. Now, Beyonce is supposedly also pregnant with Blue Ivy, okay? Liz Crokin has been on a tirade as far as trying to expose the truth on this. But let's listen to more detail on what happened with Miss Karina White. Yo, when we talk about there's no rest for the wicked, we really are targeting people like Jay-Z. Allegedly, for the last couple of days, Jay has not had any sleep because the Kathy White story is back in the tabloids, and this time, it could get really messed up for Jay-Z and Beyonce. Girl, this old story could also be the blackmail that Jason Lee has on Bay's head. Cause tell so here's the thing, right? The main reason why this is so important is for the simple fact that this is one of the many things that Jay is also tied to. Remember, we also covered that he might be tied to allegedly Aaliyah. Allegedly, he's tied to the Corey White scenario. Allegedly, he's also tied to many other things. The Tupac murder. There's a few different things and a few different reasons why Corey, why Corey Karina White is starting to come back up in the tabloids. 
story of Kathy White, known to her friends as Corey, and I have dug through every pit hole possible to gather the receipts of how Jay allegedly had poor Kathy unalived and how they was involved. Y'all are gonna need to get comfortable for this one because even I wasn't prepared for all the filth when I started digging. Okay, y'all, let's go to the very beginning. Basically, Kathy White was Jay-Z's mistress who died mysteriously the year Beyonce got pregnant with Blue. And she died shortly after doing an interview about her relationship with Jay-Z. So the rumor that Jay and Kathy were together was sparked after she and Claudia Jordan were spotted at Las Vegas Town nightclub sitting at a table with Jay-Z and Diddy in 2010. And Bay was not present. They were there to see the Floyd Mayweather and Juana Manuel Marquez boxing match with sources revealing that just before they attended the Sin City fight, Jay purchased a $25,000 pair of Louis Vuitton shoes for Kathy to wear that evening. Allegedly, Jay also requested that Corey bring a few friends to ride with them that evening so that it would not look like they were a thing. Then, during their time in Vegas, Jay also took Corey gambling at the Bellagio Casino. And once again, he insisted on Corey bringing a few friends to their table in an attempt to cover their public appearances. The thing is, Jay had been allegedly smashing Kathy behind Beyonce's back for longer than Jay and Beyonce had even been married. But what was not so shocking at the time was the fact that Kathy was a close friend of Claudia Jordan, who was well known for being a homewrecker. Allegedly, just like Claudia, Kathy had openly admitted to only messing with super rich guys and that unless a man had a net worth of at least 50 million, she wouldn't pay him any attention, which means that Hova was a perfect catch for her. Speaking of Claudia, in 2020, Crazy Days and Nights wrote a blind item saying, our host has always stayed quiet about the death of her friend, but has become more convinced over the years that the permanent A-plus list rapper had her friend it just seemed too convenient that he wanted her out of the picture. And shortly after, he said that the friend ended up dead. The blind item later revealed the A-list host was Claudia Jordan. The rapper was Jay-Z and Claudia's friend was Kathy. Okay, since the affair was ongoing, it was only a matter of time before fans figured it out and tabloids started reaching out to Kathy for tea. Allegedly, two weeks before she passed on, Kathy was contacted by a major tabloid that was investigating the Jay-Z connection. She gave them little information to go on on, but according to one of the sources following her conversation with the tabloid, she called Jay and told him that she was going to go public with their affair for a price. Then, about 48 hours after the announcement that Beyonce was pregnant with Jay-Z's baby, Kathy suddenly passed on under suspicious circumstances, and the cause of death was given as a brain aneurysm. Tell me that isn't suspicious. Of course, it's hella sus, and after a bit of more digging, I came across a report saying that Kathy did not die from a brain aneurysm. According to an NYPD detective, Kathy's cause of death was uncertain, and the detective said that they had the autopsy and toxicology reports done to figure out what really happened to her. Here's what the detective said, quote, a 911 call came from an apartment on 130 West 19th Street in Manhattan. Ambulance came and took Kathy because she was sick. They took her to the Beth Israel Hospital, and that's where she expired. It was too early to be speculating that an aneurysm killed her. They will be doing an autopsy later today day to check out her cause of death. But someone might have given Kathy a bad so they'll do a toxicology and we'll have to wait two weeks for the report. Child, even after a detective confirmed that something sus was going on there, I find it quite fascinating that the real autopsy report never came out and the information never found itself to the media. Basically, someone worked really hard to make sure that no more information got out about the affair and the cause of death was concluded as an aneurysm. Again, this definitely sounds like something Jay is capable of. So this whole thing has been blowing over recently because a reporter named Liz Crokin decided to spill. Liz said on X that in August of 2011, she was working as a senior editor for Star Magazine, and her boss asked her to look into online blog reports claiming that a woman named Kathy Coriana White, who friends called Corey, was having an affair with Jay-Z. Liz said, I managed to get a hold of Kathy at her job in New York over the phone. During our first conversation, she denied having an affair with Jay-Z. Furthermore, she also claimed that she had never hung out with him 
or had even met him. I then uncovered photos of Kathy hanging with Jay-Z and Diddy, no less, at Tao Nightclub in Las Vegas. So I called her back and asked her about the photo evidence that debunked her initial claim that she had never met or hung out with Jay-Z. At this point, Kathy expressed to me that she would consider going public with her story. According to Liz, days later she tried to reach her at work with no luck, and she finally got a hold of one of her colleagues and asked her if she knew why Kathy had been MIA. And her colleague shockingly told her she was no more. Liz also said that sources told her that Kathy had told Jay-Z she was considering going public with Star via her after they talked. She said there were also online blogs that reported the same story, and she ran a small story on this that appeared in Star at the time. In addition, she said she wanted to pursue the story further, particularly investigate if she was indeed unalived, but she was discouraged from doing so and her boss was not interested in running a follow-up piece. Liz also added that years later, she met sources who knew both Jay-Z and Kathy and inside information on her death, and they strongly believed that Jay-Z had her unalived to silence her. Allegedly, one source even told her that Jay-Z had law enforcement and even coroners in his back pocket. And the source also said that there were corrupt coroners in New York City who will rule homicides as natural deaths for cash. And we are talking about a man who had millions. So paying off corrupt coroners was really not a problem for Hova. And we all know that. Okay. So as we just saw a couple of those tweets here from Liz Krogan, uh, as I said in a tweet the other day to Jay-Z, I was the reporter who talked to your alleged mistress right before she died and was murdered. I know everything. I know what you did. Below is the Substack uh, link to my full story in detail exposing Jay-Z, murder, and the mystery. So that recently had been coming up the past couple of years. And uh, one thing I wanted to also play here. So besides Liz and Jaguar Wright even saying the same thing, um, you know, that Jay-Z is worse than Diddy. He's just a little bit smarter. I, I want you guys to listen to uh, this interview here. Now to the show-stopping night for music, the video mu music. Wait, not this one. So, listen to this one here. With Solange Knowles is here today, people. The artist I discovered. Where were you? What did you say, Igor? <laughs> New Orleans. New Orleans. Where was this? I in lived there part time. I, yeah, because I lived there part time in New Orleans, <laughs> and I. So, Solange went on an interview with Angie Martinez, and. This would be around the time of, let's say, 2014, right? So this is right around the time that the Met Gala incident yeah. happens. But notice what joke Angie Martinez makes to her. My mom came and was a chaperone. And balancing it with what we do. Yes. I feel. And how right. you hold it. And if but it's not you cool you didn't tell him come on you didn't, you didn't use the last name come on. did you say fan no do you know i am a nose no i will have you erased that yo yo you said erased <laughs> you've been erased last name come on. did you say fan no do you know i am a nose no i will have you erased that yo yo you said erased <laughs> Yeah, you are too many of them Come TV on, Solange, shows, be man. Honest. No. Be honest. Be honest. Be honest. And that's the thing. That's a inside joke that's possibly actually true. Like I said, this was 2014 when this interview was conducted. So another thing to also note is, like I said, Beyonce was also pregnant with Blue Ivy. Now to the show-stopping night for music. The Video mu Music Awards were full of exciting performances, but one star stole the night before she even sang a note. GMA special contributor Cameron Matheson is in Los Angeles with all the highlights. Boy, you saw a show last night, Cam. Uh, definitely did, Robin. And speaking of highlights, Beyonce, of course, being one of them. Now, she, she's known for her great performances, but I think this may be her most memorable yet. She did return to the VMAs in a big way with very big news. The night's biggest moment, of course, was Beyonce's pregnancy revelation. First, with some of the press outside the theater before the show. I want you to feel the love that's growing inside of me. 
And then as she sang her song Love on Top, listen to the words, folks. At song's end, Beyonce then unsnapped her vest, a pregnancy announcement like no other. It was electric. And on Twitter, word instantly spread around the world. It certainly was a night full of... Pretty much a huge night, right? So with all that happening, of course, you're not going to notice something like Karina White passing, unfortunately. But what also would happen would be the announcement of her then new record label, Parkwood Entertainment. In 2010, we would get Parkwood Entertainment, into which she would depart from her father. Beyonce made one of the most strategic choices of her career when she decided to take control of her management in 2007. Her creative output is now managed by her own management business. Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. For this video, we will discover how did Beyonce start Parkwood Entertainment. But before anything else, please leave a like on the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell down below so you won't miss our videos. Without any further ado, let's hop on right to the video. Beyonce Knowles Carter is a global brand and an American vocalist. Even those who aren't familiar with Beyonce as a musician are likely to recognize her name through fashion companies, cosmetic lines, and Pepsi advertisements. In the late 1990s, Beyonce rose to prominence as the lead vocalist of Destiny's Child, a rhythm and blues group that became one of the world's best-selling girl groups. Columbia Records, as part of Sony Corporation, published Beyonce's first solo album, Dangerously in Love, in 2003. In 2013 and 2016, Beyonce performed at the Super Bowl halftime show. Beyonce's net worth was estimated to be between $400 and $500 million in June 2019. According to Forbes, she earned $60 million in 2018, ranking third among the highest paid female musicians on the publications list and 51st among America's wealthiest self-made women. Beyonce also earns money from public appearances, modeling assignments for fashion magazines, and concert tours. Beyonce creates movies, music, and clothes through her Parkwood Entertainment firm. Beyonce Knowles Carter established Parkwood Entertainment, an American management and entertainment firm, in 2010. In 2008, the company began as a video and film production unit. Its headquarters were in New York City until 2016, when they were relocated to Los Angeles to be closer to Beyonce's primary residence. Its projects include music producing items, film pictures, and television specials starring Beyonce. Parkwood is named after a Houston street where Beyonce used to live. Cadillac Records, a musical biography in which Beyonce acted and co-produced, was Parkwood Entertainment's debut production in 2008. Obsessed, a thriller she starred in and executive produced in 2009, was her first film. Beyonce briefly explained her decision to start Parkwood Entertainment in front of her fans and the press at a private screening hosted at New York School of Visual Arts Theatre following the release of her fifth self-titled studio album, saying, I started my own company when I decided to manage myself. It was important that I didn't go to some big management company. I felt like I wanted to follow the footsteps of Madonna and be a powerhouse and have my own empire and show other women. When you get to this point in your career, you don't have to go sign with someone else and share your money and your success. You do it yourself. Beyonce's fifth self-titled visual album was released in December 2013 by Parkwood Entertainment. Beyonce's fans reacted with hilarious, honest and hysterical reactions, while other musicians were shocked by the unexpected release. The release produced almost 1.2 million tweets in 12 hours, according to Twitter analytics. The stunning release was dubbed Beyonce Geddon by Peter Robinson of The Guardian, who called it a major triumph, a masterclass in both exerting and relinquishing control. Beyonce was unannounced and unprompted when she was launched digitally on the iTunes store. It debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 in the United States, giving Beyonce her sixth number one album in the country. In its first three days of release, the album sold 617,000 copies in the United States and 828,773 copies globally, making it the fastest selling album in the iTunes store's history. It was republished as part of a platinum edition in November 2014, accompanied with an extended play of new tracks. It was lauded by critics for its production, exploration of sensuality and Beyonce's voice. 
Beyonce's album has sold 8 million copies worldwide as of November 2016 and has yielded the singles XO, Drunken Love, Partition and Pretty Hurts. Beyonce and Parkwood Entertainment launched a big collaboration with Topshop in October 2014, forming Parkwood Topshop Athletic Limited, a subsidiary to produce an athletic streetwear brand. Both parent firms control half of this new division, therefore the company and collaboration are split 50-50. I could not think of a better partner as I continue to grow the Parkwood business, Beyonce said of the relationship. Following charges of sexual harassment and racial abuse, Parkwood Entertainment revealed in November 2018 that it has acquired total control of the Ivy Park brand from co-founder Sir Philip Green. Parkwood began managing the careers of up-and-coming musicians in 2015, when it signed Chloe X. Halley, Sophie Beam and Ingrid. In 2016, GP Morgan Chase's Steve Palman was appointed as the company's COO and president. Parkwood Entertainment published Beyonce's critically acclaimed sixth studio album, Lemonade, the same year. The album was preceded by the debut of a 60-minute film of the same name on HBO on April 23, 2016. Parkwood Entertainment has been named one of Fast Company's top 10 most innovative companies in music on two occasions, 2015 and 2017. What are your thoughts on Beyonce's strategic decision? Let us know in the comment section below. Okay, so pretty much the father is now out of the picture, right? So once again, it's 2010, and which by, by the way, recently in 2022, the father also sold uh, the company, the original company that, the label I should say, that fathered uh, Destiny's Child for $275 million uh, to Apex. Once again, that was the music record label that originally fathered Destiny's Child. But, once again, this is 2010, okay? So, Parkwood is now established and the father is out of here. Pretty much because she wasn't feeling the fact that Matthew had been cheating on Tina, right? And, of course, that's the daughter. She's not feeling the fact that Matthew was cheating on her mom. On top of the fact that there's the allegations of the drug use that Matthew was also doing. Okay, so... She wants to separate herself, but if you think about it, this would also be the pivotal point to where she's marking her territory in the sand as far as her independence goes. She's pretty much just moving her own way and at her own pace. She now wants to establish her own independence once again, but, you know, people have also said that Jay was pretty much controlling her from this point on in her career. Which would explain why he's also retired for the most part and just recording. Uh, he's not recording him uh, anymore for himself. Uh, he's just doing features for the most part. And, you know, just lets her be the workhorse for everything. You know, Sing Sing be the busy bee and she that she's trained to be already. But if we move forward to the 2012 and 2014 Grammy Awards and what would happen later on in the Met Gala, we would also start to see a little bit of more discrepancy among the two. So let's take a look at something that happened in 2012 that I started to notice. And the winner is... Well, that's going to be an argument at the crib. Trying to see who's the hottest in the household, baby. I'm just saying, Jay, it's tight, but... Jay-Z and Kanye Now, who else noticed the hug that was just right there? Right? So, if we're, if we're going to be honest about something... There was just a hug among two people that are married, right? Remember, this is 2012 at the BET Awards. And I'm saying to myself, if these two are married at two, in 2008, and all we see is a hug and a push-off, and hey, yeah, thank you, I'm, I'm glad I'm happy for you, I'm happy for you, babe. I don't see any kisses going on. Right? So, let's now fast forward two years later, and I want you to notice something as well. Jay-Z, featuring 
say, I had to apologize to Jay-Z backstage because I was with, anyway, uh, I mean, did you see Beyonce when she came out? It was crazy. I was like, I had to apologize to Jay-Z backstage because I was with, anyway, uh, I mean, did you see Beyonce when she came out? It was I had to apologize to Jay-Z backstage because I was with, anyway, uh, I mean, did you see Beyonce when she came out? It was crazy. Part two, Jay Z featuring Beyonce. to Jay-Z backstage because I was with, anyway, uh, I mean, did you see Beyonce when she came out? It was crazy. I was like, Blue Ivy's mom is hot. Holy Grail, Jay-Z again, featuring Justin Timberlake. As you notice, someone was very, very, very uncomfortable there as Jay was pretty much just holding on to her shoulder, right? As she's trying to just pretty much get away, Jay-Z just holding, holding tighter and tighter to her shoulder as he's just looking away. Look how she's holding her shoulder now. Let's look again. Holy Grail, Jay -Z again. As she started to get a little bit further away, if we look closer, look how look how close she is now compared to where she is two seconds later. Holy Grail, Jay Z came out and was crazy. It's almost instant. Two seconds later, she's moving away. Holy Grail, Jay Z again. Look how he's looking. Look how he tries to move her back closer. There was a lot of history between Jimmy Fox and Beyonce. If we remember back in 2006, they did a movie called Dream Girls together, right? But like I said, I just started to notice a lot of different things that were going on in these pictures here. And let's, like I said, let's just be honest. This could all just be speculation. So this would be at the movie at the movie premiere, right? But then there's other instances of other pictures. As we see here, the 64th annual Golden Globe Awards. And there's the fueled rumors, of course, while they're filming the movie. You know, like I said, one can only speculate that there possibly was something between Jamie Foxx and Beyonce. one can only speculate that there was possibly something there. But, 
once again, it's all rumored speculation. But one thing you cannot speculate, of course, the biggest thing that you can never speculate would be the one thing of Rachel Roy, who in later years, or should I say later that year, 2014, was the Grammy Awards, right? With Jimmy Fox, right? The Met Gala happens, right? And there's a rumor of Rachel Roy and Jay-Z now dating each other. See where Jay-Z is? Did you have an affair with him? Rachel Roy spotted out amidst beyond. Hey, can you confirm what your relationship with Jay-Z is? Did you have an affair with him? Rachel Roy spotted out amidst Beyonce drama. It all started after Bay dropped Lemonade on Saturday. Photogs asked Roy the big question. Are you Becky? Rachel, what's your reaction to the rumors? She did not answer, but the 42-year-old fashion designer posted this pic over the weekend with the caption, good hair, don't care. Hashtag no drama queens. She later deleted the post, but many wondered if it was a reference to this lyric from Beyonce. He better call Becky with the good hair. Roy followed up with this tweet, quote, I respect love, marriages, family, and strength. What shouldn't be tolerated by anyone, no matter what, is bullying of any kind. So is she Becky or isn't she? Maybe we'll never know. But Rachel did cancel a public appearance she was supposed to attend Monday evening due to a, quote, personal emergency. Speculation is rife as to what actually kicked off the Solange Jay-Z elevator attack. According to new reports, the real reason behind Solange's outburst was linked to her earlier altercation with fashion designer Rachel Roy at the Met Gala. It's been claimed that Solange felt the designer and Kim Kardashian's BFF was getting too close to her rapper brother-in-law. An insider told New York Daily News that Rachel is a little too close to Jay-Z, Solange doesn't like it, and Beyonce doesn't doesn't like it. Solange then flew into a rage when late. So how many knew that she was actually that close to Jay-Z ahead of time? So rumor had it that she was actually approached, uh, that Solange had actually approached Rachel Roy prior to her incident with Jay-Z in the elevator, which begs the question. Was she actually Becky with the good hair? That evening, Jay-Z said he'd be going solo to Rihanna's after party, where Roy was a guest. Maybe this could be the reason Big Sister B didn't intervene in the elevator? Everyone knows about Solange Knowles' violent onslaught against Jay-Z in the elevator at the Met Gala, but turns out Beyonce's sister may have delivered a verbal lashing to others before physically throwing down. We guess that anger had to develop from somewhere. According to Us Magazine, Solange screamed at fashion designer Rachel Roy during the gala's after party, but it's still unclear what she was so upset about. Actually, we saw Rachel and Solange at the Met Ball in 2012 getting along great. Beyonce even reportedly tried to break up the argument between her sister and Rachel, but clearly that was all the intervening Beyonce felt like doing, because she certainly didn't stop Solange from later wailing on her husband. So how did it escalate from yelling to throwing blows? Reports range from Solange just being in a nasty, fighting mood to both Jay-Z and Beyonce expecting that type of behavior from her. Apparently, they are all attempting to reconcile and put the situation behind them. Rachel might not be designing any clothes for her for a while, though. Okay, rightfully so. But then that would, of course, you know, lead to the famous, you know, incident where Solange attacks Jay-Z in the elevator. It was so, the ultimate high again, society this scandal. Is a result the beatdown of, of one of, of New York's most famous bad boy rappers by a woman. Over the years. 
and Jay Z and Beyonce Knowles Carter, the almost royalty power couple of hip hop and R and B, set tongues wagging to across the world because of this incident. Captured by CCTV cameras in an elevator at a fancy hotel in the Big Apple. All appears calm and normal until Solange Knowles, Beyonce's sister, lunges at her brother in law. The video shows Solange, a vocal star and fashionista in her own right, punching, hitting, kicking, and clawing at the famed rapper before eventually being pulled off by a bodyguard. The entertainment world was abuzz with questions such as why did Beyonce not react at all to the incident? And of course, why did Solange attack Jay-Z in the first place? Was it because of money? Was Jay-Z caught cheating? Did he say something insulting to his sister-in-law? Or was it simply a case of too much alcohol and too many flashing lights? One Kenyan civil rights activist says the reason doesn't matter, the whole incident is unacceptable, and he's trying to reach out to the rapper to offer his support. It is not only him who is going through these problems. Many, many men are suffering, and uh, we are ready to sit with him, even if it means to, to, to fly to the U.S., and sit down with him so that we can address this problem. We understand that the in are trying to uh, uh, influence their marriage. So we, we, that is something that we are not happy about. Njoka says he has tried to reach the rapper through his agent as well as via social media. Now he's enlisting the help of mainstream media to help him send Jay-Z a message of support, man to man. Gender-based violence does not uh, just affect the, the wealthy, uh, it also affects the poor. But it, 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 is, it, is, it, happens that, it happens that most of the people who are affected are only the wealthy, only the people who have something. If you have some sense, then you are prone to gender violence. We have even members of parliament here. The three superstars finally commented on the incident, saying, quote, at the end of the day, all families have problems and we are no different. They've since appeared together as a happy family in public several times. The hotel employee who leaked the footage to the paparazzi has since been sacked. In previous... I bet you he has been. But what would not be, you know, so much secret is the fact that Solange has pretty much separated herself from the family after this. Not so much the family, just so much she hasn't really been sitting. Like at fashion shows, people have been noticing that she hasn't really been sitting with everybody else. She's pretty much been separating herself by herself. And it's more so because, as you know, as you can see, she doesn't really like Jay too much. And even though, you know, even though they've pretty much publicly reconciled it, they haven't so much reconciled it behind the scenes. So once again, Beyonce pretty much just stays the busy bee behind the scenes, of course. And she's still touring and performing, of course, and ends up forgiving Jay, which, of course, Jay would go on to do his 444 album in response to Lemonade, of course, with all these cheating allegations going on. Of course. So let's fast forward now to 2017 in which uh, a basketball game happens now. And they're at the Nets game, right? But Beyonce is seen to be a little bit drugged up a little bit. For security solutions here about the game, Glenn Martin of New York City. As a long-time real estate executive for Christian and Wakefield, Glenn had the foresight years ago to know what Brooklyn could become Played an important role in the renaissance of our thriving world. In addition, Fred was a key player in helping the finest team's future HSS for security solutions here about the game, Fred Martin of New York City. As a long-time real estate. Notice that Jay looks up at the screen like, okay, this isn't gonna look good tomorrow. But I want you to also notice what happens before that. So Jay looks over at her. She kind of says something. For security solutions here about the game, 
Clinton Martin of New York City. As a long-time real estate executive, she's kind of like, I'll let you know when I'm ready to go. I'll be okay. For security solutions, you're well the game. Clinton Martin of New York She goes, no, I'm okay. And Jay's like looking up at the screen like For security solutions, you're well the game. Clinton Martin See? Jay even asks her, you alright? For security solutions, you're well the game. Clinton Martin of New York City. As a long-time real estate executive for Christian and Rayfield, what happened? Like, my goodness, this is not going to look good tomorrow. Foresight years ago to know what Brooklyn could become and he played an important role in the renaissance of our thriving world. In addition, Clint was a key player in helping the Fine King's future HSS training center, location in Sunset Park, Brooklyn. And also gives back to the community as the founder of Brooklyn 1834. Now, was that not the man, uh, a face of a man that looked very concerned when he looked up at that screen? He was not looking at the scoreboard, I pretty much tell you that. He was looking at the fact that he was pretty much caught on live TV on the big screen up there, noticing as Beyonce was pretty much just swaying back and forth with no music pretty much going on, as if she's just not even there. Let's watch Beyonce again. For security solutions, you're welcome to game. Glenn Martin of New York City. As a long-time real estate executive for Christian and Rayfield, Glenn had the foresight years ago to know what Brooklyn could become, and he played an important role in the renaissance of our thriving world. In addition, Glenn was a key player in helping the Fine King's future HSS training center, location in Sunset Park, Brooklyn, and also gives back to the community as the founder of Brooklyn 1834, which provides a forum for the world's up-and-coming artists. Through the illness, Glenn did not of our thriving world. In addition, Clint was a key player in helping the Fine King's future HSS training center, location in Sunset Park, Brooklyn, and also gives back to the community as the founder of Brooklyn 1834, which provides a forum for the world's up-and-coming artists. Through the illness, Glenn could not be here tonight, despite his illness with the same determination that he's used to make Brooklyn a better place. Glenn is represented tonight by his wife, Jan, and his children, Theo and Edie. Please join SW24 Security Solutions and the Nets and show appreciation for Glenn's leadership and his contribution in making Brooklyn what it is today. So that would be the pretty much extended clip of what was going on that evening as people just started to pretty much tune, uh, hone in on the fact that Beyonce didn't look like she was even there. But let's also read here from Daily Mail on what even happened that evening. So I'm going to show you guys, of course, here as they were able to show some key angle points of what happened that evening. So it reads here, Trouble in Paradise. Beyonce and Jay-Z, now remember, this is 2017, okay? So, oh, excuse me, 2014. Uh, Trouble in Paradise, Beyonce and Jay-Z have an awkward exchange at the basketball game after recently renewing their wedding vows. So they, re they recently renewed their wedding vows, seemingly silencing uh, critics about their uh, reported marriage woes. Uh, See, as, as it says there, critics were, were uh, with the marriage woes so i want to say about uh around the same time of that uh the incident the Met gala that's when people started to realize okay there might not necessarily be any love there between jay-z and beyonce there's more of a business arrangement people started to notice that there were a lot of things that could implement that right so, let's continue. But on Wednesday, Beyonce and Jay-Z once again had their union uh, questioned as videos surfaced of the couple having an awkward interaction at the NBA basketball game. Uh, the 33-year-old uh, single ladies hitmaker and rap and uh, rap mogul husband, 44, attended a Brooklyn Nets game uh, together Monday. These are the pictures once again from the video we just watched. Now it says here the two stars poked a few words 
while the Nets welcomed the Oklahoma City Thunder to the arena, before Jay quickly turned around and looked up at the scoreboard and adjusted the collar to his sweater, which, as you noticed, he was just saying, you okay? You okay? And she's going, yeah, 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 I'm all right. And then she starts doing the swaying back and forth, and Beyonce be bizarrely swayed back and forth with no music on as the 99 Problems rapper awkwardly squid back and forth up at the HD screen, which, of course, he was starting to look concerned. Now, this is what was very alarming here with this picture. If you notice the dilated pupils, as well as, you know, this could very much be her trying to get Jay's attention, of course, it looks like, or she's also looking at the game while she's talking to him. But if you notice everyone else, of course, Beyonce just doesn't look coherent in the eyes at this point right here. I don't know if this is MK Ultra or just the, like I said, the rumored drugs that she might be on. But this doesn't look like a person that's coherent watching a game as much as it is, you know, someone that might be on something, allegedly. I'm just being honest here if we're looking at that picture closely. But then there's other instances where she looks very regular, but once again, not necessarily coherent. She could be paying attention to the game, but... Is everyone else paying attention to the game? You know, you got someone standing up here. You got someone looking over here. Someone talking to Jay. What's actually going on in the court that Beyonce is actually even paying attention at this point? So, let's read here again. Not a happy camper. The clip features the couple exchanging seemingly tears words toward one another. Then it says, moving and grooving. After what looked like an argument, Jay gave his attention elsewhere as Beyonce swayed back and forth despite no music being played. Uh, for a good part of the game, Beyonce was pictured not smiling with a jacket on her lap and her arms crossed as Jay interacted others uh, interacted with other fans around him. Uh, despite seemingly exchanged terse words toward one another, the two did put on a united front as they also smiled for a few photos together as the Nets won the game in a blowout once. 16 to 85. Uh, the apparent spat comes weeks after the couple reportedly renewed their wedding vows at a special commitment ceremony during a family holiday for Beyonce's 33rd be, uh, birthday in September. Uh, there has been rampant speculation of a possible split between the two since May after footage of Beyonce's sister, Solange, violently attacked Jay in the elevator had surfaced. So, once again, it wasn't, it, it isn't something that, you know, is brand new to people as far as, you know, people saying that they're not really together. That this is more of a business arrangement than it is an actual love and marriage. So, let's also couple this in with a former bodyguard that had rumored to be saying the same thing that Beyonce was just being drugged and controlled Beyonce and Jay-Z will do anything to destroy anyone who speaks out against them okay I get the threats meet Uncle Ron Uncle Ron is rumored to be the quote unquote original bodyguard from the old days of Beyonce and Jay-Z. Now, like I said, this is alleged. I'm going to keep saying that again throughout this podcast. This is alleged of who he actually is. But he is the, the alleged bodyguard, former bodyguard of Beyonce and Jay-Z that has been coming out with some rather, you know, interesting information. But you have to remember one thing. I know your deepest secrets. I know so much about you and what you've done. I know so much on how you got where you are. How you stepped on many people. Beyonce. How you guys ended 
Carrie Hilson's career because she said something about you. That's how hateful you guys are, how you step on anybody to stay on the top. So remember, your relationship was a business relationship, financial, to get to the top, to be, be to become billionaires. There's no love there. See, what's done in the dark will definitely come in the light. Keep your threats up. I'm here today, and what I got to say, I'm going to say it. So don't, don't, don't make idle threats to me. I say I ain't Biggie. Say I ain't Beanie Seagulls. I ain't Freeway. How you, you roll all of them off the minute they did for you to get you to the top. All of them writing for you. And then the minute you get a little taste of success, you wrote them off. You just totally said, I don't know. Them. Say you don't know me. I dare you. I dare you. Remember, all the receipts, all the proof, the old school footage, I still have it. See, hardly nobody knows, but I'll say it, man. Yeah, Beyonce's on drugs. She's been on them for a long time, and you keep her that way. Y'all wish it what you wish it to stay on top. But there's one thing about me, bro. I can't be bought. This is Uncle Ron. Just like I know how you guys started, I can put my foot down and make you make it all go away. Promise you. You're playing with the wrong one now. So, one thing's for sure, right? Even though that's alleged. And as we can see here in the pictures, this is we Uncle Ron. Back in the day, bodyguarding for Beyonce. So, he's actually telling the truth as far as when he was the actual bodyguard back in, as you can see here, 2004. For Beyonce. Right? Besides all the alleged things, one thing that is for sure is that if we fast forward to nowadays and if we look at, for example, the list of albums that Beyonce has dropped over the years, one thing will show why there is a switch up to Cowboy Carter because the Renaissance album tanked so heavy compared to the others. Or is there possibly something else behind this? If we look here, Dangerously in Love, 5.1 million in the U.S. alone. 1.3 million in the U.K. 3.8 for B-Day. And let's just say 700,000 for the U.K. Right? 3.4 for I Am Sasha Fierce in the, in the American. Uh, then the U.K., 1.8. Now, the release of an album through Parkwood. Right? This will go on to sell 1.5 million. Then the quote-unquote Beyonce album, 2.4 million. And then the Lemonade album, of course, sold almost 2.5 million with UK having 500,000. And the U.S. alone having 1.5 million. So, if we notice here what happened, the U.K. once again had 515,000 for Lemonade alone in 2016. She comes back six years later and doesn't even have a quarter of the U.K. sales. Sells only 335,000 copies. Now, once again, this would be the one, two, three fourth Parkwood album right everything prior to that was Columbia Records are we following here 
the release of Cowboy Carter has only been said to say go what maybe platinum well, one has to ask himself let's be honest the album that did the most was because of what and number wise since was Lemonade but it only sold because of the actual marriage controversy that was going on between her and Jay because let's face it the album didn't necessarily sell without that controversy going on and Becky with the good hair and then we have the Renaissance album that comes out afterwards that barely sells anything for 335000 and now she's being worked again and forced to put out another album right after she literally just came off of one of the biggest grossing tours of last year isn't that something fans don't even know if she's going to tour because of her secret quote unquote knee injury. <laughs> All right, it's uh, just about 10 30. That means it's time for some celebrity dish. We got Dominique and Eve in the house this morning. Yes. yes. It feels good to be back, yeah, family. We We've been yeah. catching up on right. your life and all the things you've been busy. I mean, she's been busy doing, yeah, so it's good to see yeah. you. I'm yes. glad you could squeeze us in. Yes, no, thank you all for having me. <laughs> this definitely, definitely feels like home, and I hear we get to get into some spicy celebrity dish. Absolutely. Just like, like good times. Yeah. Uh huh. I like the good times. And then yeah. you can catch us up a little bit on what you've been doing uh, before we wrap here. All right, let's uh, talk about Beyonce because her tour kicked off in Sweden last night and while fans were dazzled by the produ production and set list they were less than dazzled by the dancing in fact some people say for a Beyonce concert there was very little <laughs> dancing oh. producer Chris is standing by with details on why there was a lack of footwork Chris I'm surprised people even dared to say that I'm, saying. I'm nervous just telling this right. story to be honest <laughs> with you especially when we have a card carrying member of the beehive uh -huh. right there on the couch with us good morning Dominique <laughs> good morning Chris. so here's the deal rumor has it the lack of footwork was due to a foot issue but we'll let me know what you guys think of this, okay? People online are saying the singer underwent a secret foot surgery prior to her performance in Dubai. Okay, so the rumor sparked after author Garrett Kennedy, who wrote Whitney Houston's biography and was in Dubai for the show, tweeted he was even more in awe that she's doing this after foot surgery. Now that tweet has since been deleted. Meanwhile, for all those fans asking for visuals for the Renaissance album, this was the response during a portion of her set in Sweden. A narrator, a voice interlude, told the audience, you've asked for the visuals, you've called for the queen, but a queen mo moves at her own pace. There was another word right after that. Oh. I cannot say that word on TV. Oh. <laughs> okay. I'll let you use your imagination. Yeah. However, I'm curious. We'll start with Dominique. Uh, what do you think of this criticism that she wasn't dancing enough? Well, clearly, she just told you all once again, a queen moves at her own <laughs> pace. So you're talking about dancing honey have you heard the renaissance album from the top you are the one that's supposed to be doing the dancing hey. and that's exactly what i plan to okay. do when i see her live i've got my second row seats wow. and i will be dancing my life away i don't even know if i'll notice how much she's moving or not but are you guys not entertained she is on stage for three hours she is yeah. you know drenched in custom ball mane and all these <laughs> other designers she's giving you lights she's giving you costume changes and you guys are talking about so, her footwork well well here's what i got from what you said Dominique got money, money, because she's the second. I mean, here's my rich friend. Listen, you right? have to pay your beehive dues in order to do that. Wow. Uh, I'm excited for you. I'm sure it's going to be a good show. Here's the thing with Beyonce. She has set the bar so unbelievably high that when she has a very human experience, let's say it is this foot surgery, which I had heard that with the Dubai concert, folks are like, come on, what is this? When really then she ends up being on the same level, maybe even, yeah. as other entertainers out there. So... Uh, Give her I, a break. I say give her a break. And from the looks of it, it looks like a great show. Okay. All right. And remember, after Homecoming and that Netflix documentary, she also talked about how hard she pushed herself. Yeah. And that yeah. she did not want to do that again ever. Right. Okay. So, one thing we always have to note here is that Beyonce has started to separate herself pretty much from Jay. Right? Like we said the list of albums that she's put out has shown that 
So, once again, Lemonade only sold because of the controversy. And people have been saying that she's been separating herself over the years more and more, which would be the reason why Cowboy Carter was the switch up. You have to notice some of the moves here. So at the Grammys, it would appear that Beyonce would not be standing so much with Jay-Z a lot of the night. So even something as small as let's look at once again the platinum hair color. Her going completely blonde is a sign of change coming also. Now, besides the 2024 Grammys, the 2023 Grammys, something would also happen. But before we look at that, let's listen to Memphis Bleak saying to Nori about Jay-Z and Beyonce's drinking. I, I was um I was beefing with old one time playing around and I was like, no, I drink more ace than you. He was like, yeah, probably in one city. He said, but through the months, I, I'll smoke you. But then he said, but B will smoke you. And I was like, then brought his wife in it. Yo, they could drink I, I, Texas. Yeah, they could drink. I heard, I heard Texas Beyonce. Drink. I heard Beyonce. Yo, I, I'm I can't drink. I'm 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 a sucker. I'm petty. You heard? I gotta mix it, take a couple shots. I'm acting like I'm cool because we on camera. But when I leave leave out of here, spaghetti leg. Well, <laughs> feel me? Well, let's take another shot. Cheers, that. So why would Memphis Bleak say that? Of course, that Beyonce can out drink both of them together. Hmm. Well, it appears that. Jay Z also would confirm that and feels the same type of way in these 2023 Grammy Awards, into which he does this. Welcome back to the Grammys, everybody. You know, when you equal a record, there's no way you don't get to hold your Grammy and your. Welcome back Notice to the that he didn't realize everybody. he was you being caught on camera. Tries to offer her a drink on camera. The dream, of course, looks very confused by this. Welcome back to the Grammys, everybody. You know, when you equal a record, there's no way. Look how confused the dream even looked when Jay Z tried to pass her the drink. Welcome back to the Grammys, everybody. You know, when you equal a record, there's no way you don't get to hold your. And it would appear that Jay Z was almost trying to embarrass her, similar to how the Nets game situation went, if we're following along here. So. He tries to pass with the, the drink. Grammys, everybody. You know, Beyonce, of course, doesn't even record, hesitate to no say no to that she doesn't want it. But let's be honest. Why is Jay-Z trying to pass Beyonce a drink in the first place when she could easily have her own drink and pour her own glass? Hmm. I thought about that when I first saw that. Listen to the actual Welcome joke the Grammys, everybody. You know, that was you said behind it. Record, there's no way you don't get to hold your Grammy in your hand and celebrate that. And the Queen is officially in the building. Ladies and gentlemen, Beyonce knows. So she pretty much was about to get that award. And Jay's about to give her a drink. Let's talk about someone looking to embarrass someone right then and there. Hmm. So someone that would point something out that's been quote unquote been right about things over the past couple of years I mean he's on record for being the guy that actually called P. Diddy's raid Reggie Wright also had something to say about this drink passing that Jay did okay um <clears throat> what did you think of the 50 year uh that I viewed y'all that had me messed up the whole time well I'm I'm thinking y'all Jay-Z hey you know my girl Beyonce what you talking about Reggie you always trying to start shit yeah I do cause I catch stuff and I point out shit he knows she about to go get this major award and get this award at the Grammys he know his wife 
He know how she get. He done seen her and left her in limousines and stuff. Drunk. And people got on him about that. Why you why you got your woman out there? Why you ain't protecting your woman out there? I and mean, they know. It's obvious, y'all. Bay drinks a little bit. She gets drunk. And I probably would have tried to get her drunk too. <laughs> as fine as she is. Right? And so he wanted some loving that night. But why knowing she about to get on the stage and do all of that? And knowing she got to go before the American people? Is he trying to force a drink down her throat? Push making her drink? Well, she got to go and say, no, no, no. Not right now, Jay. Not right now, Jay. That was the biggest disappointment I had where some stuff going to come out pretty soon. Mark Reggie right word about Dre, not Dre, Jay-Z and B and, and this drinking and him making her uh, drink in public and all of that. I ain't, I ain't got a problem with drinking. But what they do, like y'all know her biggest song, yeah, she did, Drunk in Love, or what was the name of it? Drunk? Yeah, y'all yeah, know what I'm talking about. But if that's how y'all get down, and that's what you got to do to make you get down, to make you feel that certain way, because the key is not with y'all, and y'all in that nice hotel and all that. But can you wait, dog? Can you wait? Stop trying to give B alcohol in public, dog. Stop it, Jay. Y'all bigger than that now. Y'all are black royalty family right now keep it that way read your opinion which wouldn't be a bad opinion it would not be a bad opinion at all so as you can see reggie points that out but one thing to also note is jay-z hasn't really showed up to quite of a lot of her tours remember beyonce has pretty much been the busy bee throughout the entire time of her career she hasn't pretty much been, you know, seen even out and about with Jay throughout the time. As you heard before, while the Karina White thing was happening, she was in Sydney, Australia. She was overseas doing other things. She wasn't even around Jay, right? So the only other time she's been on tour with Jay would be the On The Run tour, into which he was a part of. The only other time that he's been a part of the tour would be this recent one, of the renaissance tour but it would also seem that he was also trying to just clean up his image and just be showing face if anything so if we want to be you know critical thinking <laughs> this is jay of course you know showing up here with the twins with the, with the twins i should say in blue ivy Now, once again, you don't really see Jay out and about too much at these events. It almost became an actual thing that Jay was even at the show. It started to become an actual thing of him showing up and being in the VIP section with people. But notice that there were different celebrities, almost like a Vegas res residency with Usher, there were different celebrities showing up to these VIP residencies. And then I started noticing, you know, why would that start to happen where a guy that usually doesn't hang out with anyone, all of a sudden, he's got a lot of people coming to the VIP section to chill and party with him. Why is a guy also trying to, you know, all of a sudden hang out on a tour he doesn't really show his face on too much hmm would someone be trying to uh i don't know save face and trying to make themselves you know appear more wholesome than they might be One only has to think about that.
could this be a situation to where Jay basically, you know, he has to pretty much stay like this for right now because of what's going on with Diddy. Remember, Jay is in multiple alleged allegations as far as the quote unquote he's supposedly, you know, implemented in the Keefe D murder trial. He supposedly, you know, allegedly attached to Clarence Avant. He's allegedly attached to Aaliyah. He's allegedly attached to Corey White. He's attached to a plethora of things. You know, let's stay on the subject of one thing that, you know, Beyonce is once again trying to remove herself from Jay in the first place. So she can't even be seen or be rumored to do, be doing anything like drinking out in public, even though, you know, she's doing something like the CBD right now. She's a CBD smoker. She wants to have the farm. Nothing wrong with that. She takes it for ins her insomnia, right? It's for her insomnia. But I want you to listen to what this celestial said about Beyonce. Master's voice. I am celestial and you are welcome to the period, depending on how frequently you see it and how. Now, one quick disclaimer, right? This particular celestial, a year prior, she had called the fall of T.D. Jakes. I'm going to say that again. A year beforehand, this celestial had a vision with the fall of T.D. Jakes. And we all saw what happened with the fall of T.D. Jakes with P. Diddy. Hello again, and woke up, and I said, wow, oh, okay, Lord, I've seen it. I've seen the dream, and I'll remember it when it's time to wake up. But right now, it's too early to wake up, Lord. It's too early, please. I want to go back to sleep. And so I slept, but I had this same dream. Something happened concerning Beyonce, a huge scandal that was about her and something that she was doing behind the scenes. It was not her husband who made front page news. So please understand that it was not Jay-Z who ended up on the front page of the newspapers and who ended up trending on all the major news channels in the United States. It was her. And it seemed like as the scandal was unfolding that Jay-Z was mentioned, but he was only mentioned in passing whether he was directly involved or not, the viewer, including myself, wouldn't be able to tell because they weren't focusing on him. The person who was catching all the flack, the person who was having all the questions asked about her and everything else was Beyonce. It was her face that was on the newspapers. And in some pictures, some newspapers had put flattering photos of her. So she appeared in the news and she looked good. But then in others, the newspapers were not painting her in a good light. So, you know, sometimes these tabloids and other newspapers, they will wait until the celebrity is not looking that great. Maybe their face is full of donuts or they've gained extra weight or they're at an unflattering angle. And the paparazzi are merciless. They don't care. They have kids to feed. And so they took, they will take unflattering pictures. And it was these awkward photos that some publications were using and together with the kind of story, the kind of scandal that had broken and the way the news was running like wildfire through the country, it was very difficult for this woman to maintain a good image to the public. Her public image was being battered because of the story, because of how many people were carrying it, because of how much chatter and because there was no deflection with her husband in the story. All guns were on her. And so, um, I was, I was sitting in this second dream in a cafe. So I was sitting in a cafe and I was just having something to drink. And then a newspaper just appeared in my hand like that again. And once more, it was a half page ad about Beyonce at the bottom column. And she was wearing so little in the second dream. She was wearing so, so little that I was mightily irritated even as I was reading the story because the picture they had used for her was a picture where she's in this signature black leotard where the back is not fully covering anything. And so her whole backside was out in this black leotard thing that she wears, I think, um, for shows. And she was wearing um, not longer hair as she does. She was wearing a short bob, which is 
odd to me, but maybe the people who follow her know better. She had her hair was cut short, very crop in a blonde crop, and so I don't know if the sh the picture came from a show, but it was not flattering, and it was very much getting on my nerves. And as I was reading the story, I was just thinking, why would you want the whole wild wide world to see you like this? as you are fighting off a scandal. And I read the entire article, I read the whole story, and again, none of the details remained with me. But in this second dream, after I read it and I saw how, how she was clothed and how they just had her, you know, people always say, oh, this is a mother of children. Yes, but the mother of children is not asleep when she's choosing her wardrobe. So she can see her children and then she's still putting herself forward like that for you who consume it. So I was reading and then all I, I felt was, this is very bad. This is very bad. And then the image drew out a little bit and that big word scandal came up on the image of myself sitting there. And I woke up and I said, okay, okay, Lord, I've seen it. I will remember when I wake up, but I think I still need to sleep. And so I slept again and there I was back in Manhattan um, walking down the street where we have these kiosks, you know, we have these newspaper kiosks and these guys are selling everything that you just need to save your life. They have, uh, soda there, they have water there, they have gum, they have, uh, coffee, they have sometimes giros, they have so many things. Uh, and all of a sudden I had a newspaper in my hip pocket and I just pulled the newspaper out from the hip pocket of my jeans, and there was Beyonce again on the front page, and this was being called a scandal as big as Michael Jackson. It was being equated to Michael Jackson. So a scandal as big as MJ, and I'm standing there now in front of the park, and I'm reading it, and every single person in the park has the newspaper and is reading the newspaper. Every single person in the park is reading the same newspaper as me, and I'm telling you, that park is as frozen till only the Tweety Birds are making the most noise. Everywhere you looked, on the park benches, scattered all over on picnic blankets. People had their cooler boxes out. People had taken sandwiches out, but they were not eating. People had their sunglasses on their head and they were reading like, oh, you know when people are scandalized and yet it's juicy and they actually don't care in their heart. And this is the hypocrisy of, of many fans. You, you will act as if you're cut to your soul, as if this person is your mother's uh, third child that she never told you about and you're so cut, but at the same time, you're the same ones who will put your camera on and eviscerate this person. Have you heard? Have you noticed? Did you know? Anyway, I'm not saying too much, but what do you guys think? And you populate gossip spaces, forgetting that gossip is a sin, and you will roast under the gaze of Jesus Christ when he begins to go through your rap sheet on the judgment day. But let's continue. People were sitting and they were scandalized. They were covering their mouths, sitting bolt upright, and they were making these shocked noises like their last relative just died. And so I'm standing there right on the street and I read the story again. And then in this dream, notice that the first dream, I thought to myself, what a scandal. This is the same thing that happened to Michael Jackson. That was what I retained from the first dream and then scandal came. And then in the second dream, I'm wondering about why this woman doesn't wear much. Why does she present herself like this? And then also noticing that her husband is not picking up much flack. And then um, scandal comes up again. And then this third time I'm standing outside a park and everyone is reading the same story. So whatever this is, it will be everywhere. It will literally be everywhere because in the city, that park is opposite the park that I was at is opposite a lot of a lot of the business district. So what do we gather from that? The Celestial basically just had a vision that Beyonce is going to take pretty much the fall for her husband. And we all know that her husband pretty much is in a lot of different scandals right now. And this is going to be one that she's not going to be able to escape as far as, you know, the notoriety of this quote unquote scandal that could be happening to her. Now, this is going to affect a lot of things, but it would also explain why she's using the country approach. If you look at the universe and how she's moving, this would be, you know, perfect time for the actual country approach because it's a more slower pace. It's less hip hoppy. It's a less more uh, aggressive uh, approach to things. So you, you have the country 
Cowboy Carter look to her, you know, it's it's more relaxing as far as the look goes in that, so to speak. So let's again notice how much she is separating herself from Jay. And it would appear to me that it might have been Jay all along that Beyonce's hands, you know, Beyonce's hands are pretty much not clean, just like anyone else's isn't, you know, she's not perfect, but I think Jay's done a lot, way more than her as far as crookedness is concerned. Um, you know, Jay in these next few years, we're going to see once again, it's just how strong of a person, you know, it's just how strong of a marriage that they might even have. If this is a marriage at all, people are saying that she's already started to flee the country, that she's rumored to be leaving the country already. And that could be a very possible thing. Remember, Jay also had beef with Tupac back in the day. You know, we don't have to keep playing that, but we don't have to play that, I should say, but that's the thing. He had beef with him back in the day, the same time that Diddy did. So if we're, you know, factoring in all the different things that Jay is in, one has to speculate what that scandal could actually even be. But I wanted to also take a look at Jay and Beyonce's interactions at the, you know, awards. Actually, you know, before we do that, one other uh, thing that, you know, I I said I was going to get into before was the fact that Jay was also alleged to have something to do with the killing of Clarence Avon. Now, if you don't know who Clarence Avon is, let's look at this uh, quick couple of minutes of this documentary with Clarence Avon, because Clarence Avon was said to be the godfather of music. Okay. The God, the black godfather of the music industry. So Clarence Avon actually owned a lot of a good percentage of rock nation as well. He had a lot of stake in that. Okay. So once again, someone that had, legally advised jc had passed away nicole you have to get up and you have to get to cedar sinai you have to get to the hospital i go what That's what you, what's wrong Clarence. Clarence. it is my great privilege to induct you into the rock and roll hall of fame in the world of entertainment and civil rights the name clarence avant resonates with an unparalleled legacy of influence and impact Born on February 25, 1931, in Climax, North Carolina, Clarence emerged from the crucible of racial segregation and prejudice to become a towering figure in Hollywood and a champion for civil rights and social justice. Clarence Avant, whose unofficial title of the Black Godfather spanned the worlds of music, sports, entertainment, and politics, died on 13th August at his home in Los Angeles, According to a statement from his family, no cause of death was provided. He was 92. It is with a heavy heart that the Avant Sarandos family announced the passing of Clarence Alexander Avant. The statement from his children, Nicole and Alexander and son-in-law Ted Sarandos. Through his revolutionary business leadership, Clarence became affectionately known as the Black Godfather in the worlds of music, entertainment, politics, and sports. Clarence leaves behind a loving family and a sea of friends and associates that have changed the world and will continue to change the world for generations to come. The joy of his legacy eases the sorrow of our loss. So Clarence Avon was actually, you know, killed uh, right after the 2020 brunch, the Rock Nation brunch. That's what was made to be, you know, a little bit not of a coincidence. So, the wife gets shot. Not soon after the wife gets shot and killed, he catches dementia and passes on. But don't take my word for it. Listen to Jaguar Wright. 
Are you ready to break the chains of poverty over your life? What a doctor has to remedy. The Talked a couple days ago and it was a little different, but you started off by saying I've stayed and kept Jay-Z's name clean for years, which you have clean. Yeah, you have 100 yeah. percent. That's 100 facts. Gave him a clean bill of health so he could get good insurance. Go ahead. The is yours. I said it. What's what's the what's it? What's the problem with Rock Nation and Jay Z now? Or what's the, what's the um, of who? who you mean they're murderers murder and elaborate setup kings. And fuck Revolt TV too. I hope you like taking um Diddy Dick Nori. I mean that figuratively, but for all I know, it could be literal. Allegedly. So, specifically, we got to ask you the question. You talk about murderers. I mean, that's a strong allegation. How do you know? No, they kill people. Right. Who and how do you know? If you could share that. I'm going to tell you this right now. Mm -hmm. Last November 2021, there was a Rock Nation brunch. Mm-hmm. Clarence Avon, the black godfather of the industry, responsible for Quincy Jones' career, brought us Bill Withers, took care of niggas in the game for the Jews for many years, decades. At the dinner, he expressed he had no no interest in retiring and he was looking forward to working with Rock Nation to build a better, brighter future for our people and music. Three weeks later, some random motherfucker uh, uh, wanders into his mansion with armed security and all that shit with a fucking AR a rifle, a rifle and shot his 80 year old wife, Jacqueline Avon in the back. In a house. The murderer, once upon arrest, laughed about it to the police and told them how he enjoyed shooting that old woman in the back. Like he ain't have a care in the world. I recently found out that three days after that, apparently Clarence Avon has went into a state of full-blown dementia, progressive dementia, eating applesauce and blowing bubbles and milk and shit. But three weeks before that, he was perfectly fine. I guess he had to retire, huh? Not long after that, Diddy and Jay-Z been running around acting like they fucking run. They run L.A. Mm. Just like I know, Sean Carter poisoned and killed Kim Porter. Whoa. Just like I believe. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just like I believe. Okay, so before she goes off on a tangent, she usually does. But as you just heard, you know, she pretty much broke down that Clarence Avon was pretty much assassinated, you know, because he wouldn't step down from his Rock Nation. Just like I believe. People, we got to ask you that. Because Kim told, Kim told both of all the Sean's. Fuck you, Sean. Prove me wrong. Sue me or kill me. I'm ready. Dash's personal assistant. Call Aaliyah so strategically. Pray to Jag. Like I said, she wanted to break down pretty much everything that was going on with Jay-Z. Through what he what he's put himself through I with think the media and with the to Joe. I'm actually doing we're um we're we're starting to produce lightweight produce. So Another thing is, that you have to note is Jaguar Wright is supposedly going to be uh, one of the media journalists that's going to be on uh, on hand on the sideline for the Keefe D trial. So that's going to be interesting in itself. But not to get too far off on a tangent, you know, once again, Beyonce and Jay-Z have been pretty much separating themselves. Well, as Beyonce has been separating herself from Jay-Z. And this would be even more imminent 
than it ever has been at the recent 2024 Grammys. I want you to point out one I want let's point out one thing here. Look at Beyonce. Notice who is not anywhere in sight right here. Oh, there he is. Way over here. Once again, I want you guys to notice the awkwardness of the distance between these two. Sorry, can we not do it? Yeah. What's up? Huh? Notice how Beyonce is now just now coming over to Jay. They basically. If you notice, they hadn't really seen each other. And that would be Jay-Z, of course, drinking out of his Grammy. But that was another thing. Jay was very, being very, very arrogant at these Grammy Awards as of late, at these last two Grammys, I should say. And the only thing I can think about is when Diddy was being very arrogant, calling out Diego, saying that they were racist and, you know, they weren't really going to support him and things of that nature, right? Jay would do a very similar thing with the Grammy speech, but with this particular Grammy speech, just listen to how he actually kind thank of you, throws thank a little you. bit of shade you very much. toward his own wife. Um, I used to say it's a sippy cup for blue... <laughs> But Blue's grown up now. She doesn't take sippy cups. And she has her own Grammys. Um, first of all, um, thanks to Dr. Trey who said he in the house. He's somewhere. Oh, there he is. Andre Young, thank you, sir. All the doors that you opened, you know, showed us that we can be um, rock stars. Seeing you on the Rolling Stone. Obviously, there's Run DMC with the Leathers and the Aerosmith. But when you came out west, you took it to a whole new level put us on covers, Rolling Stone, put us around the world, you and Snoop, all that y'all did, all the records y'all broke, so thank you for this. Um, honored, honored to accept it, honored to accept it. And thank you to the Black Music Collective for all the work that you guys do, scholarships for young creatives, and hopefully, you know, I'm adding to, you know, what you guys are doing out here. Obviously, uh, it's, uh, it's great to have a, an award um, for such an icon. How far we've come with uh, Will Smith and them, Chazzy Chef and the Fresh Prince, winning their first Grammy in 89, and boycotting because it wasn't televised. And then they went to like a hotel and watched the Grammys. I didn't even understand what the... <laughs> wasn't a great boycott. Um, <laughs> we're here. But then, 98, I took a page out of their book. I was nominated for the best rap album, and DMX had dropped two albums that year. They both were number one. Shout out to DMX. And he wasn't nominated at all. So I boycotted it, and I watched the Grammys. <laughs> I'm just saying, we just, we want y'all to get it right. We love y'all, we love y'all, we love y'all. We want y'all to get it right, at least get it close to right. And obviously it's subjective. Y'all don't gotta clap at everything. Obviously it's, sub <laughs> obviously it's subjective because, you know, it's music and it's opinion-based, but, you know, some things, you know. 
I don't want to embarrass this young lady, but she has more Grammys than everyone and never won album of the year. I don't want to embarrass this young lady. Listen to that again. This young lady. No, it's music and it's opinion based, but you know, some things, you know, I don't want to embarrass this young lady, but she has more Grammys than everyone and never won album of the year. So even by your own metrics, that does This young lady? Now, of course, he would be referring to his wife, Beyonce. Some of you going to go home tonight and feel like that. I don't want to embarrass this young lady, but she has more Grammys than everyone and never won album of the year. So even by your own metrics, that doesn't work. So think about that. The most Grammys people, never won album of the one year. One thing people would start to point out with the fact that Beyonce wasn't too happy with that. Now, I started to notice this, too, when the camera panned to her. Did anyone else notice the fact that one eye was closed and one eye was open? I couldn't tell if she had a twitch going on or she was just that upset that what was going on with the this young lady remark. Because I also started to notice the symbology of the checkered uh, board uh, jacket that she had on going on. With the Cowboy Carter theme. But anyway, let's not go for the tangent. Aside of the, you know, possessed or drugged up or MK Ultra effect going on here with the eye, I noticed Beyonce was also not too happy with the whole this young lady remark instead of someone saying, my wife, or this beautiful black woman, or so on and so forth in that regards. But to say this young lady who's 42 years old is a bit disrespectful when it's your wife. Don't you, don't you think? That doesn't work. You know, some of you, some of you going to go home tonight and feel like you've been robbed. The most Grammys never won everyone and never won album of the year. So even by your own metrics, that doesn't work. Think about that. The most Grammys never won album of the year. That doesn't work. You know, some of you, some of you gonna go home tonight and feel like you've been robbed. Some of you may get robbed. <laughs> some of you don't belong in the category. <laughs> oh, no, 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 oh, no, no, that was it. No, when I get nervous, I tell the truth. Um, but outside of that, outside of that, you know, we gotta keep showing up. And forget the Grammys for a second, just in life. As, I, as my daughter st sits and stares at me nervous as I am. Um, um, just in life, you got to keep showing up. Just keep showing up. Forget the Grammys. You got to keep showing up until, you, until they give you all those accolades you feel you deserve, until they call you chairman, until they call you a genius, until they call you the greatest of all time. You feel me? Thank you. Okay, so... Once again, as you heard the shade here, that would be one of the times where I started to say to myself, you know, what? it's, it's going to be one of those things where he's going to pretty much put his foot in his mouth, similar to how Diddy did with Diego. That's what I got the sense from that with that whole speech here, with him being very arrogant, saying some people are going to make it, some people are not, some of you shouldn't even be nominated in the category. A very arrogant speech, nonetheless, from Jay. And like I said, once again, throughout the years, it would just go to show that, you know, Jay-Z pretty much, you know, the headless horseman right now with Diddy. And they pretty much, you know, are just running around doing pretty much whatever they want. Adores and loves her man. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I would not be the woman I am if I did not go home to that man. Mm. And it, it just gives me such a foundation and... How has he helped you? On so many levels. You know, we were friends first for a year and a half before we went on any date on the phone for a year and a half. And that foundation is so important in a relationship. And just to, to have someone that you just like, you know, mm -hmm. is so important and someone that is honest.
Do you know, I remember the first time you were on the Oprah show and I told you, don't go around telling people who you're dating. Mm -hmm. I think you took that all the way. I took it as far as <laughs> oh I could take God. it. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I, I didn't say, you, you don't tell people who you're dating, but you can tell people who you're married to, okay? <laughs> you took it a I little too far. I took it all the way. <laughs> you took it all the way. You gotta listen when Oprah speaks. <laughs> Good God. Good God. Yeah. How did you all keep that a secret? I think now people have a, a respect for our relationship. And it's one of the, the reasons why, because they know that we want to have our lives and when it's time to, to perform on the stage or then it's time. But when it's time to go on a date or go be who we are, people are respectful of that. Are you a better woman because of him? Absolutely. Is he a better man because of you? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> we, we have done it for each other. For each and other. I think it's the most important thing in a relationship. So one thing we always have to, you know, remember is the key thing that Jay-Z and Beyonce have always had some type of friendship and love for each other, but this was definitely more of a arrangement more than anything for one or the other to get to a certain level of success. That part is very imminent to me, in my, in my opinion. And... When you think about it, Beyonce, like I said, was very young when she came into the game. Very young when Jay-Z started dating her. Very young when still, um, even when the father left. And those two started to just, you know, figure out their way as they're married. And Parkwood starting in 2010, at the same time she's pregnant, at the same time... The Karina White thing is happening. You know, Beyonce has went through a series of trial and tribulations with this man. That is one thing that is for sure. And if she is, quote unquote, separating herself and getting ready for this divorce, as many people has been saying, she is getting ready for a divorce and getting ready to remove herself completely from Jay. If that is the case, you know, <clears throat> kudos to Beyonce. Because she'll be doing the right thing and she'll be pretty much doing a uh, public Cassie move because Cassie was only able to remove herself quietly behind the scenes as Diddy does, as the Diddler does. You know, 2018 would be the last time that we seen Cassie and Diddy together, but, you know, we wouldn't come to know that until years later. So if there is going to be a public outing, which, of course, I looked up, you know, the, the prenup between these two and these are all like I said unauthenticated un 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 unauthenticated uh authenticated excuse me unauthenticated it's late here uh prenup here so the uh, blueprint of Bay and Jay's prenup so uh keeping assets separate the prenup ensures that their uh, premarital assets stay separate fostering financial transparency in their union uh post kid protection uh, recognizing the impact of career breaks on women's earnings, Beyonce receives $5 million for every child they have. It's a strategic move that uh, safeguards her financial well-being. Then three, the exit strategies. Just like their hit songs, their prenup has a rhythm to it. If the marriage were to end before two years, Beyonce pockets $10 million. For every year that they stay married, she receives an additional $1 million, up to 15 years. So remember, She's at 16 years now with Jay being married. Let's see, 2008. Yeah, she's at 16 years now being married. So she would only get about $16 million, and that's pretty much it. I actually know $15 million, and that's pretty much it, being that's up to 15 uh, years. So, post Lemonade Era update after the emotional roller coaster of the Lemonade Era, the power couple revisited the prenup and formalized a post prenup agreement this shows that financial agreements like relationships can evolve over time uh read more beyonce and jay-z's post prenup agreement uh why a prenup uh and if of course they don't really have the actual updates here so this would be the billion dollar prenup
but it wasn't really much to be said about it because of course they're very private people they're not really going to have the prenup up there as far as the new update is concerned and compared to the other one but you know one can only speculate with the billion dollars of course how much that there actually is going to be you know updated in that uh, Jay has more to lose than Beyonce of course you know but one thing that is for sure is that there is definitely some type of arrangement that is going on between those two and whatever the arrangement is it will be handled in private when it's time for both of them to actually split you know we've definitely seen that and of course we've confirmed there is definitely going to be some type of split going on between Jay-Z and Beyonce uh, within these next couple of, I want to say, year or two. I'm going to go with what Sloan Bella has said. Within these next two years, we're going to definitely see the split between Jay-Z and Beyonce. And as we have went over here on this podcast, we pretty much see why. Beyonce is pretty much tired of his shit. <laughs> She's pretty much tired of his shit. With not only the cheating and allegations, but also you have to couple that in with all of the other things that he is tied to as far as Diddy. She's always tried to remove herself and keep herself away from whatever Diddy's handling and all the other things. You don't really see her at the uh, the parties, the Diddy parties. You've never seen Beyonce really at a Diddy party, but you've always seen Jay-Z at the party. I want you to also think about that, right? At all these birthday parties that Diddy has thrown, you've always seen Jay-Z, but you've never really seen Beyonce show herself there. Only at the 50th birthday party, I believe, uh, Beyonce made herself an appearance. All the other ones, I think Beyonce was on tour or performing or doing something else. She was not around Diddy as much as Jay has been. That is one thing that we also have to keep in mind. As well as, like I said, we've already went over, he's tied to Aaliyah. He's tied to Keefe D. He's tied to Clarence Avon. So many different things. So many different things, okay? And with that being said, you know, I think we pretty much have wrapped up what is going on between Jay-Z and Beyonce. And I think we're going to see what I want to give it around the time of Diddy's birthday. Everyone's saying everyone's saying around the time of Diddy's birthday that we're going to see him go to trial or whatever or go to jail. But I would like to see what actually happens uh, after that. Um, I want to say maybe a year after that when, you know, everyone starts to talk because that's what you got to think about now everybody's about to start to talk people are starting to be worried right now people are worried about what's about to happen and Jay is even more quiet remember 50 50 Cent has been pointing that out more than anybody that Jay Z is very quiet where's Jay Z at they even put a meme up of Jay on a milk cart remember that saying that you know that he's missing let me show that real quick so 50 cents has been sharing encrypted messages basically saying that Jay's missing since the whole Diddy allegations. Which only begs the question, why are so many people saying the same thing? And why is Jay-Z so quiet right now while Beyonce is just moving around on tour doing her own thing? It makes you wonder 
what exactly have these two been up to behind the scenes?